Does it really say that? Yeah. Welcome to another edition of the Mexican Soccer Show. We had some technical difficulties, or it looks like we're on now, hopefully. I think we are now, finally. There it is. Just, just tell us on the chat there if it's it not working. Yeah. It is finally working, guys. We're on. Welcome to an edition of the Mexican Soccer Show. This is an hour-long podcast dedicated to all things Mexican football. Lots and lots of talking about. Talk about. We're 15 minutes late. Looks like something was going on with the YouTube channel. If, uh, but we're on now, so we're ready to go. Uh, on today's edition, we'll be talking all about Liga MX, Chivas, America, Cruz Azul. Congratulations for winning uh, Chivas, Almeida, and also with uh, finally America getting its win. Leon, not the leader anymore. Pachuca coming in, taking that over. Jinak, three goals, finally gets his hat trick. Lots and lots to talk about. We're going to be talking also about El Tri, 54 players that were rumored. This long list of players. Uh, well, Juan Carlos Osorio. But first, let's say hi to all of our uh, experts here in the Mexican Soccer Show. And we'll start with Mr. Tom Marshall in Guadalajara. Chivas, Atlas, Atlas. Chivas, always something dramatic coming out of your town where you're at. How you doing, sir? Oh, Tom's mic isn't working. Tom, we can't hear you. Unmute yourself. Tom, <laughs> unmute yourself. There we yeah, go. There we go. There we go. Yeah. All <laughs> kinds of technical difficulties today. Sorry, guys. It's just no, that yeah, but, uh, Another disappointing weekend for the, for the Guadalajara <laughs> teams. I mean, <laughs> what more can you say? Chivas 2-0 two two nil to Morelia over there in Michoacan. A big loss for Chivas. Only being held up now in the relegation table by uh, the, the, the saviors, Dorados de Sinaloa. <laughs> Um, so really disappointing, and then Atlas doing, you know, what Atlas do, Hello Atlas, winning, a couple of minutes left, playing pretty well, and then next thing you know, Puma score an offside goal, and, and uh, to extend Atlas's winless run in the Stadio Jalisco. Uh, and you got lucky further. on that prediction, that was what got you away from our prediction with that draw, I was so mad. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Welcome Tom, welcome Tom. As you know, we also have Mr. Nayib Moran from Mexico City. Nayib, Juan Carlos Osorio's 54. It's like Studio 54. <laughs> what is this big, la long list of players that can, that can only get in? It, it, I feel like it's a VIP club. There's okay. only, it's like a 54 VIP list that, okay. you know, no, Juan Carlos it. Osorio. I brought that <laughs> VIP line in there. Tell us more, Nayib Moran, how are you? Uh, so first of all, buenas noches, caballeros. Uh, we saw Cesar, Johnny, Tom. Caballeros, um, it, like it. <laughs> it's a, a big list. You know, I think it's it's a big list, but it sort of describes the type of coach that Juan Carlos Osorio is. He's really careful, really, really picky about detail. You know, you never know. Maybe one player gets hurt, so he'll have three on the backup. You know, ready. Uh, but what's interesting about the list, I think it's uh, the names that are there. You know, there's a lot of U23 players on the list, like Rodolfo Pizarro, who played a great game against Rayados this past weekend. Then you have Gutierrez, you have Chucky, and then you also have the Chivas players, Salcedo, Norbelin, Pineda, who are scheduled to play against Senegal in the Miami friendly, but it looks like the club doesn't want, in the, uh, doesn't want them to play this friendly. Oh, it's always good to have the drama between club or country, like always. We'll go to Mr. Uh, that knows a lot about drama, Mr. Johnny Rico. <laughs> and, uh, you can come on, Mr. Johnny. How are you doing? No, I'm pretty good. Yeah. There he is. Hey, yeah. Nobody can mute my mic. I can't. I can't see you though. You're yeah, all, you, uh, there your you video go. isn't working. Johnny, Johnny, I think I have some technical tickles on your video, but we'll get back to you. We'll get back to you. We can hear you, Mr. Cesar, who uh, in the beginning of our, our of our yeah. first broadcast, since we got. In you know, we had technical difficulties. I was like, great job. You're wearing your Chivas jersey, but show everybody it's not a Chivas jersey. Mm -hmm. Nope. Mm -hmm. There it's, we go. It's uh, PSV Eindhoven. PSV. Uh, quick, quick credit really quickly to ourselves for having to do this intro all over again. For some odd reason, this is more difficult than I thought it would be. I thought we'd be able to, like, burn through this pretty quickly. But any, <laughs> here's our here's our second intro. Uh, yeah, good, good to be back. Good to be back at Mexican Soccer Show. Good to be talking about football. Good to be talking about... 
uh, Chicharito again, and since this is our second intro, I've been able to look up more stats because we had a little bit of like about like five minute pause right there. So really quickly on Chicharito, I mean, he's scored 13 goals, 16 league games. That's recently he's had his third brace of the season, and I got an interesting thing between that five minute pause. Uh, an interesting thing uh, from the Bundesliga website, it says that the Mexican Chicharito has now had a direct hand in almost 45% of his team's goals in this term. So that says a lot about how well he's been doing. It says a lot about how influential he's been. Um, and mm -hmm. obviously there's a lot of good things we could talk about with the Europeans, but there's also a few players like, for example, you could say Ochoa Reyes, who have been a little negative recently, but we'll talk about that later in the show, but good to be here. And uh, yeah, glad, glad we're finally going through this second intro now. So. <laughs> well, Not bad. you know, it, it happens sometimes here. Um, as you can see, we got a nice little different setup. Now I can look at the camera straight over here where I have, you know, the guys and, and all, all, all it up. So thank you to the production team uh, for getting us all set up and ready to go. Uh, but well, let's get started because I know we're already late, uh, especially for those of you here on the East Coast that are getting ready to go to bed. Thank you so much for staying with us. But first, got to say hi to everyone on the chat. Uh, that's on there, uh, including our buddy Jason Markowitz, who uh, is not joining us today, but is joining us on the chat. Ask him any question you want, especially on Cruz Azul. His team won, so definitely it's good for him to, to be on. Logic, uh, we got a lot of guys from the Pancho Villas, guys, Omar Santos, uh, Antonio Ortiz, uh, Steve Graff, one of the writers from uh, Food Next Source. So a lot, a, lot of, a lot of people are on the chat. We invite you to come on and ask us questions there, and we'll be looking at the chat regularly to see what you guys are going up to and all the fights and different things that happened there in that chat. But let's go ahead and get started today, a very, very special show. We have lots and lots to talk about Liga MX, but first we'll go into what is our uh, our L3 corner of, of the week. We didn't really talk a lot last week, but coming up in less than... Um, Oh, actually, almost a week and a half, We're ready to go next week on Wednesday, where Mexico will play Senegal in Miami. No Europeos. And what I wanted to kind of chat with you, and Naib already mentioned this fabulous list of 54 players <laughs> of what's going on. Um, there's even players that can't even play <laughs> in L3, right, guys? I mean, this is what this is what kind of funny about this 54 list. Naib mentioned a little about it, but Tom, this is just kind of a rumored list. It's not really confirmed from what I've been hearing. No, it's, I mean, records put it out there. Um, you assume that it's come from, if not just completely made it up. I mean, that's what you, that's what you want to you wanna believe that, don't you? But, um, yeah, I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with, you know, every national team will have, like, kind of a depth chart where, you know, players move up and down and, you know, it gives a, gives a manager a good idea yeah. of, of where players are at. But I think, I think they were playing for the visa for Canada, um, and I think that was part of the reason why they had to give these 54 names. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure we'll get into the a little bit about the actual names. Uh, you know, um, a couple of things though that I, I think stand out. One, Juan Carlos Osorio is not going to be happy that once again things are being leaked out of the team. You know, dun, dun, dun. I mean, it's been happening for so long now with the federation, and you know, I've said it before pretty strongly. I think it's a complete la lack of professionalism for people who, for, if if someone has actually done that. And then secondly. Um, the, that happens the, almost. The, sorry, Tom. That happens almost everywhere, though, right? Things get leaked no, out, no, or no. I mean, I'm just used to the Mexican national team. No, I mean, you know, like the Spain squad, the Brazil squad. Who actually knows the the squad before it's like made public? Who knows the starting eleven? And a lot of the time with Mexico, people just tweet out. I mean, I think Osorio really tried in those World Cup qualifiers to kind of stop that. But again, you know, it's something that he's going to have to work with because it's just how it works in Mexico. This is this is different. But the other thing that's weird as well for me, Guido Pizarro and uh, it's Mayo Sosa who aren't who can't play. I just felt I found it very strange that he even mentioned them because, you know, these naturalized players they've got to actually fulfill like the five year residency rule that FIFA has in place. I, don't under, I feel like we people have been talking about that for such a long time now. I don't understand Every how that's still part of the conversation. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah, I mean, basically, in Mexico, you get two years for a South American. You can be become a Mexican in two years, but FIFA's ruling is that you have to actually live in that country for five years to qualify for for its national team. I mean, it was done because Qatar were basically, you know, importing Brazilians and like na naturalizing them really quickly, and obviously they were, you know, that was the idea of how to develop the national team. So, so FIFA introduced this five-year rule, and it's just weird that someone like Osorio, who is so like, you know, 
uh, meticulous in his planning and stuff. Would you know? He's, he's even mentioning these names of players that are still at least a couple of years off being available for the national team. So I like no, to call them next the files things? because it's so it's, it's <laughs> very very when dramatic. Are the, one of the things <laughs> with the uh, with the numbering, uh, we're saying a lot of uh, you know, fifty four stands out because you know he talked about it in last week's presentation of of the objectives that El Tri does every year. Um, but it actually, you know, when you see the the depth squad of, uh, you know, how deep how deep uh, El Tri squad is, you know, it's actually 15 players, 15, 16 that you know you already know. For example, you already know Talavera is going to be the starter because mm -hmm. Osorio has been saying that Talavera should play in in England. He already says that Hector Moreno is probably among the top 10 uh, left-footed center backs in the in world, the and of course Andres yeah. Guardado, the captain. So there you, and then of course early on in the show, Cesar was talking about Chicharito's numbers. Of course, Chicharito is a starter. So I think the base of El Tri or the 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 backbone of it, it's pretty obvious at this point. Yeah, and then obviously you got Omar Bravo in there. Um, you know, obviously. <laughs> I, <love. laughs> I think I, I think the a couple of those strikers definitely stand out. You look at a, I mean, it's Omar Bravo, not only him, but just a Henry Martin, may, potentially maybe making his return back to the national team. And uh, I'm sure Johnny could talk about this a little bit. I mean, I've been following Scholes for just a few months now, but he's definitely in a... I, I don't know if he's national team caliber just yet, but I think he could be... He's a potential for the future. And I think it's, it's been fun to watch him, but I, I don't know if he's at that level just yet for the Mexican national team. I remember we used to make fun of, of, of Hugo Sanchez coming out with this, like, 70-man list and 50-man list of all the things that he's watching or whatever. Juan Carlos Osorio does it. Maybe not an official way with record coming out and looking at the list. And like you guys already mentioned, there's players that can't even play that are on that list. I mean, <laughs> I mean, Ay Ayala's yeah. injured and he's on that list. I think, he, I, I think, is it like yeah, yeah, maybe it's fifty? It, it's it's a player that he's watched. All right, I'm down to fifty-four. I'm a, I've watched fifty-four players and uh, I'm I'm looking at him and, and the list is going to keep growing because he keeps going to many games every week, right? <laughs> um, I mean, it's not just. I mean, you also have some of his uh, his assistant coaches. What well. I'm mean, the goalkeeping coach was watching the the Cruz Azul match, uh, which is maybe why you're seeing Joey Corona on there as well. Well, you know, just to bring up some something from the recent past, hashtag Miento como record did not become a trending topic for no reason. <laughs> Very true. Very true. Yeah. Everyone yeah. running off to it. Johnny always always bringing us back to. To ground, you know, grounding us. I, lo I love it, guys. Well, We're there it is. a few steps back. Oh, maybe sometimes, but, <laughs> but we love it here in the Mexican soccer shows, and we keep going. We we see that the stories that are coming out. We, we report to them. We see what's going on. But something that it's not a rumor. It's it's definitely true. Is Chicharito, and we'll go over to our Europeos of of all his records. What's going on? Uh, you know, Cesar mentioned a little bit about of 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 all of it, but we're still. You know, kind of every time he scores every week, and we're like, and here's another score, and this is another reason why we all believe. But did we all really believe this was going to happen? We kind of wanted to. I, I remember in the Mexican soccer show, I, I tweeted out who's going to score more more goals, Tecatito and his new team, or uh, you know, or uh, Chicharito and Bayern. Many of you guys said Tecatito. So yeah, it, just the the amount of the people are surprised that Chicharito scores should tell you of how many people did not believe that this was going to happen. Yeah. I think I think for a while with Chicharito too, um, we've seen how effective he's been. Not not just within the past one or two years, but for for a long time. That when he has actually been given minutes, how he has scored a significant amount of goals. So I think for the long time the question was, if he is given those minutes, will he actually follow through and we actually score those? And now that he's had this opportunity with Bayer Leverkusen. It seems like he's ultimately proved that when he has had that opportunity, when he has had a regular playing spot, you know that he could be one of the top finishers. I mean, just not saying he's one of the best strikers in the world. I'm just saying that just effective-wise, he's right now he's one of the best right now in the world. That's true. Uh, over the weekend, he scored two goals. It's 7:30, mm -hmm. 8:30 in the morning for you guys that are you know on the West Coast. Wake up, you watch Chicharito, and as soon as you turn it on, it feels like Chicharito scoring every Saturday. Uh, and great goals over when uh, a bicicleta moves over to the left with his left foot. It just shows, you know, what he can do and how he can. And it's still surprising everyone there. Uh, Cesar, I know you had some stats over with uh, even even comparing it. I saw some even comparing to Messi in the Mexican national in Mexican national team and how many games and there's so many different stats that Chicharito you can bring up. But what are some key ones that everyone's kind of talking about? I know they always put it. 
you know, in like 16 games, he's got the most goals out of anybody. Yeah. I mean, it's it's unfair. No. Let's let's not compare him to Messi because that's you know obviously we we love to do that stuff. We love to compare sometimes like Luis Suarez or like maybe a Bomiang might be a different thing. But uh, I for I mean, as I mentioned earlier in the show, I mean it's his, it's his third brace of the season. In league games, he's had 13 goals in 16 games. Um, he's been, as I mentioned as well, he's he's been voted as one of the top player, as the best player in the Bundesliga for three months in a row. And I forget exactly what it was. I think um, Naib uh, retweeted. It was on uh, ESPN Mexico or something like that, which was, I believe, in his last 19 games, or it was his last 16 games, he scored 16 goals, if I remember correctly. Someone, someone remind me what that number was. I think it's more than that. Was it really yeah, more than that? Yeah. Yeah. Nineteen is somewhere there. I don't know if it's nineteen games, sixteen goals. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would say, uh, but but yeah, we we cheated it out on the ESPN uh, three account. But the thing with Chicharito though that I that I want to point out is because uh, I remember last year or I think it was last year I wrote a, a, an opinion piece that I wanted to see Chicharito in the Bundesliga when he was sitting on the bench at Real Madrid. Uh, I think it was the league that sort of suited him. Uh, I, I sort of envision it, and now I see it happen. You know, Bundesliga has had great, great strikers. Like, you know, the the, the current one is Lewandowski over there in Bayern Munich. He also had a great time in Borussia Dortmund. You know, that's the type of of career or or career path that Chicharito is taking right now. What I wanted, what I want to point out right now is that I think Chicharito should stay more time in Leverkusen because oh, yeah. I think that. You don't, think you, should, you don't think you should go to Liverpool? All those rumors oh, about no, Liverpool. No, no, I mean, I think the number one option. Everyone sort of sees Chicharito already scoring a lot of goals, and and you want to see him somewhere else. You want to see him, okay, Liverpool, Arsenal. No, 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 I think right now he's sort of finding a home in Leverkusen, and the the president, the directors, all believe in him. They believe of building the team around Chicharito, and I think that's what he needs. And if he's getting that in Bayer Leverkusen, hopefully he can stay there. Two or three years, I'd say. Of I course, if the offer you. is big, if the offer I, is big. No, no, I, I agree with Naive, but you know, kind of based based on last week's state, statements that Mexicans just don't do good in Premier League. You know, Chicharito's one of them. I think what are you assuming? You're just assuming that I'm any Mexicans. <laughs> what you're just assuming that any Mexicans just can't do well. In, in England? Have you have you seen a Mexican thrive in England? I, I mean, go, go back go back to the conversation we had last week, Johnny, and the fact that we're not going to go over that again. In, in how, how it is? Well, but, Caesar wasn't here for that one. Now I got to argue it was Caesar. No, no. Yeah, but really quickly, Caesar, just, just really quickly, just just because so, like a certain type of player, just because a certain type of nationality hasn't done well there. And I don't, I don't know. Just traditionally, just doesn't mean that that any other player in like the history, like yeah, in, in the mean, future, won't be able to do well. You can the, have exceptions. The, the player that we were talking about himself already played there, and, and he did well. well. He did well. He did, he did very well. Did There's well. no way you can say he didn't do well. But anyway, this this is this is that. He was I think, never a starter. He, he was never an absolute starter. And he still what scored sorry, 20 goals in his first season. Who, who started in the Champions League versus the best team that ever played, Barcelona, and that that won the six cups? It was Chicharito in the, in that. Oh, in that and, and he would he would have started for for ninety percent of the teams. Yeah. So it's, you, mean, you could say he went to the wrong team. Yeah, Rooney and Van Persie are absolute when they were when they were on when they were in the peak on form. Chicharito was a, was a bit younger as well. Chicharito right now is in his prime. This is when you expect him to be. And would he be starting at Manchester United now? I think he'd have a, a, a very good chance. But yeah, this I, is I, the I, point I, I want to make. This is the, Rudy right now. Yeah, this, this is the point I want to make, though. I think that people stereotype leagues and they're like, Premier League's like this, Mexicans can't do it. German League's like this, Spanish League's like this. It's like, no, it's you, you got to find the right team for the player. And I think Leverkusen, yeah. the way they play, the way they break really quickly, it gives them space to operate. You know, uh, you can move into the channels. You know, and and I think the, the opposite of that was Van Gaal's United. I mean, it was completely very, very um, sterile. You know what I mean? And for a centre forward like Chicharito, who feeds off kind of balls over the top and balls through, and and and, and relying on players that can feed him, I just think it was a, a bad uh, bad mixture there. But I'd back Chicharito would be a starter for me in seventy percent. Of Premier League teams right now, and I'm absolutely not. I don't, I don't know. I don't know why people still question his ability because he's, he's a top top player. I mean, the only thing that I think is really a regret in his career that I still can't believe it myself 
um, and I think other people who don't follow Mexican football can't believe it, is that he's never gone into a World Cup as the starter. Yeah. I think it's unbelievable. When you look at what he means to Mexican football and what he means to Mexicans, it's like he's never started in, but hopefully in Russia, hopefully in Russia he'll start because I don't, yeah, I think, yeah. think people outside of Mexico just couldn't believe it when Oribe Peralta was starting when you've got this guy who's, you know, played a champion, Champions League final. Exactly. Felt like great it was always point, just on the team. It was great, great points. And someone who would know about Premiership is, is Tom, all right? So we'll just lend it at that as having <laughs> this is Tom knowing. He was just there, and he's Does a he big man. man, I, man. I, I mean, uh, I going need, over, I need to want to believe. Uh, you know. All right. Going over to uh, keep going with the Europeo talks. Guys, I don't remember. I mean, looking at the schedule uh, and, and, and watching on Saturday, you know, I, haven't, I don't remember this many Europeos playing and starting. Is it just me? Um, and if somebody come up with a, with a figure of how what was the record of yeah, of Euro players starting? I think right now, it's definitely a golden time. Right now, I think it's a golden Europe. time. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's, it's at least like it, every weekend, at least for me now, even comparison to last year uh, or last season, every weekend I'm not only just expecting starts, I'm expecting goals. I'm expecting to hear someone have a goal and assist. And now it's starting to become. It'd be weird if there wasn't at least one goal or one assist from a from a player. Last season was a little bit different, but now if if I didn't hear about a Chicharito goal, if I didn't hear about a Layun assist, if I didn't hear about Guadalajara assist, then it would be a strange. It would genuinely be a strange weekend. And what do you what do you think that is? Um... We're seeing players not going into these super clubs, and not that they went before, but you know, you saw the Stuttgart's, you know, when 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 Osorio and Pavel went, and, and they played, and they were champions. But it felt like that's where Mexicans have to go to in making these jumps into into uh, into Europe. Uh, La Jun, you know, many people criticized when he went into the championship, and then finally came into Porto. Now we have the Porto players. Uh, Naive to you, what's the success? Um, as to we're seeing more starting Fabian de la Mora now getting a start uh, obviously Chicharito what he's doing the Porto boys all three starting Herrera getting captain uh, you know we're seeing more more and more minutes from 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 the other players but what do you think is, is the reason why we're seeing so many starters and actually doing well over the weekend I think it's a combination of things we saw I mean uh, we have to go back to Rafa Marquez success era in Barcelona I think that's sort of the root of everything when you see it you know, of course, Hugo Sanchez had his moment in the 1980s, early 1990s with Real Madrid. But I think the root of it all is Rafa Márquez and what he did in Barcelona. Then, you know, Andres Guardado followed. And the fact that these players can come back to the national team and sort of transmit their ideas or their experiences in Europe open up the eyes of many players. And also, of course, Osorio and Pardo were, were integral part of that, of that movement. And, of course, the achievements that occur with the U-17s, then, you know, somewhere used 20s, the third place in, in Colombia in 2011 was special because from that generation you have Diego Reyes, you know, Ulises Avila is back in Liga Mex, but he, he tasted the, the honey of Europe, how you would say, and, uh, and then of course the London Olympics, and that's where, where, where Marco, Marco Fabian de la Mora comes in, and, and now he has his opportunity, his golden opportunity in Eintracht Frankfurt, so I think it's it's a combination of the fact that I think the mentality of the Mexican footballer is more open to the idea of going abroad and also that they have good advisors. I think Rafa Marquez and Andres Guardado have been great in that deal of transmitting them those ideas. Also Hector Moreno, who I think left Pumas at a really young age, succeeded in Aneset Alkmar, then went to Espanol. Now he's in PSV and he's mm -hmm. one of the best left footed center backs in the world. Yeah, I, I think we're gonna. I think we're gonna see increasing as well. I think the success we're seeing now in the next five, ten years is gonna gonna increase in terms of Mexicans doing well in Europe. I just think there's been a complete change since like 2005 in the Mexican game, in that there are clubs now who have really invested in youth systems. There's clubs that the, these under 15s and under 17s are like playing in China, they're playing in Italy, they're playing t youth tournaments all over the world. So the Mexican player now coming through, I think, is so much more worldly, so much better, so so much more prepared for the challenge of going to Europe. And it is a real challenge, not just on the field but off the field. I, I, I think when we see this new generation now, and we've talked about it with Pachuca, you know, the Gutierrez, Pizarro, and um, Lozano, I think. That generation downwards, I think we're going to see a lot of success in terms of Mexican players doing really well in Europe. As far as, uh, you know, we're looking over the players that are now, everyone's having regular minutes, other than Memo Choa, which, by the way, we didn't see any news come out in the winter transfer. Uh, I was kept mm. seeing some kind of tweets, maybe some kind of miracle tweet that someone somewhere found a way. <laughs> 
Um, <laughs> you know, I go back to who is his his agent. I feel like if he's got like Neri Castillo, had like nine teams after he was horrible, and he was able to go to decent teams. I can't understand why Memo can't go or Alan Pulido. I mean, his PR team's amazing. You know, he's playing. You know. <laughs> back to that, but let you know who who's having uh, who's struggling out there uh, in 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 Europe. Even though we have those, I mean. Uh, and what news can you bring us uh, on, on that, uh, Cesar? I know you, you're yeah. big with the Europeos. Who do you think, if we had to pick one that's struggling the most, uh, Raul, did we I mean, get some Reyes? Actually, you know what? I, I, th I, think Raul, I think Raul Jimenez has been doing all right. I think uh, I wrote it down, but since December, he's had four goals and three assists in all competitions for, for Benfica. It's been a gradual growth. I mean, he's not... He still not exactly have the starting role, but he, you know, he's getting there. I think, other than Ochoa, I think it's Reyes. Uh, since uh, Eusebio Sacristan has taken over in November, s since that guy's taken over, Reyes has been essentially a bench player, and sometimes he's not even on the game day roster. Like he's he sometimes won't be able to show up, you know, for these games. And I think, I mean, just, we're looking forward. I know we're talking about Udo Fails. I think that might be a worry because I, I felt that you know once he was getting regular playing minutes, it just made sense. Okay, so now Rafa is slowly making his way out. We're going to have Reyes right there playing right next to Moreno. But if Reyes is struggling, and if he isn't getting any minutes, and if Rafa's on his way out, then who do we have right there as a center? Who would be, I mean, maybe Ayala, but I mean... I, I, yeah, Palmera Rivas. Palmera, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> Jose Arturo Rivas, but uh, I mean, just quickly, but just going back, I mean, there's, there, are, there are rumors that Fiorentina um, was interested in, but I mean, it's... it's Right, the, the transfer window is closed. The only the only window that's still open right now is for Germany. That's open until five o'clock tomorrow. I don't think any German clubs are going to be picking up Reyes at this point. <laughs> Clutch so, I, I just think, does that. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. I don't. I don't think. I don't no, think you, anyone's. You know, what, you know the the thing that, that worries me about Reyes and and a bit about Ochoa. I'd love to know what Johnny thinks about Ochoa's you know stagnation really at Malaga. But the thing that worries me about those two players is that coaches have come and gone. You know at those clubs, and they stayed on the bench, and you know not necessarily with Malaga with with Ochoa, but throughout his career, there's been times when coaches have Ochoa. ditched him, and especially the the 2010 World Cup. But it, it tells me that the there were coaches out there who were looking at these players, Reyes and Ochoa, and thinking they've got doubts about them. You know, I, I think that's the that's the really worrying thing for for those two players. I think. And I know Johnny, you're gonna you're my, gonna chime in. Yeah, my thoughts is so trust the best Mexican goalkeeper there is. We know your thoughts, Johnny. <laughs> but I mean, what, what what do you think, Johnny? I mean, I know we we know you like Ochoa, but I mean, what what are your thoughts on what his career has become in this la in these last couple of years? Yeah, it's it's a real shame that uh, these uh, short-sighted coaches can can see what they have right in front of them, especially but, Vasco Aguirre in 2010. But it's not the first time, Johnny. It, it feels like he's always seeing. You know, it, it, is it practice? He's not giving enough. Is it is it drama? Is it you know, he just doesn't want to practice as much as the other way. It just feels like coaches, and just what Tom said, coaches keep overlooking him. Piojo giving him, you know, it was a big surprise over Corona because uh, what Corona was doing, and obviously we all know Ochoa, and we've been waiting for the savior Ochoa to play regularly. Um, and here it is again, another yeah. coach not playing. and Un unfor not again. Unfor Unfortunately, um, Piojo Herrera has been the only visionary coach that Ochoa has Stumbled upon uh, lately. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I don't know. It was pro the World Cup. We can agree the World Cup is the biggest stage in soccer. You know, he, he did it. and he did it. You know. But yeah, no, but I mean, I feel like it's always like so polar polarized when we talk about Ochoa, especially because you've got these two camps that are like. But I mean, for for me, the other worrying thing is that Malaga are a selling club. I mean, Malaga. Are, and not a team that kind of hold on to players. They're desperate for money. If they get decent offers and they sell, and they've got a player on the bench who's actually worth something in the market, you know, Choa. And it's worrying that, like, what happened this transfer window? You know, I mean, and then, Tom, one, that's a good, uh, good points you bring up there. I mean, one can suggest maybe some issue with the passport. You know, does he want to stay more years in Spain so he can mm -hmm. sort of finally finalize And that's a good point. Passport deal. Yeah. I mean, he right before he was an adopted opportunity... I think the mistake was to go to Malaga in the first place because when he was in Ajax, there was definitely offers from uh, the French league. There was definitely teams that were interested in him because he was already a, a, a top goalkeeper in League One. So I think that was the mistake. The mistake was to go to Malaga in the first place. I do believe that teams from Turkey have made offers to Malaga. 
But I don't know if Ochoa wanted to go to Turkey to play. Yeah. I mean, but when that's the first point that you put on there because he had one more year, and I was one of the people that also criticized him. I'm like, just stay one year and you get that passport. And that's it. You can go anywhere in Europe. And he left. Uh, you know, the dreams of being a goalkeeper in in, in Spain yeah, and in La, and you know, and, and I think that's exactly the point. That is just not. He's waiting for the right offer. And how many years is he? Had? Doesn't he still have about a year and a half? I think in Spain it's two for a Latin American player. For Latin two American player, but it's, it's yeah. total three. You for the EU passport. And I think that's where he was at with Ajax. Joe, you know, at least but, waiting one more but year. The problem, but the problem with Ajax now is that. I mean, so, yeah, even if he decide, I mean, he's going to stay with Malaga now, but what does that mean for his, with his role with the national team this year? I mean, I, 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 I know Johnny is immediately going to say, like, you know, he had a great, you know, World Cup last year, blah, 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 not last year, two years, two then the 2014, years ago, two years ago, yeah, that's two, that was two years ago. It's still, it's it's gonna, it was a long time ago. But do would and like and I and I put this question up on Twitter, and there were a lot, significant amount of fans who said that they would not trust Ochoa as a starting goalkeeper for the Copa America. I mean, we can't really. I mean, Black if we're going to bring up the Olympics, it looks like Balaveta. He he hinted at the fact, you know, that he would be involved with the Olympics. Would we really want Ochoa, like uh, Ochoa, who has? I mean, there's no Copa del Rey anymore for Malaga. Yeah. Would we really want him? Would we really want him starting? For the national team, you can't. Yes. You can't have a player. I mean, the only way that I can see Ochoa starting in the Copa America is if Osorio absolutely loves him, completely backs him, and starts him in the two friendly games before. So he's at least got those two games. Yeah. But he's not going to do that because he's going to want to give the other goalkeepers a chance. And you know, a co you can't just have a player who doesn't play for like a whole year or plays like two, three games in like a ten-month period and then put him in. I mean, it's just. It's just not the way it works, you know what I mean? And that's why they have pre-season friendlies before the season to get the players complete, like sh sharp and stuff. So, yeah, I think Ochoa's struggling. It's really sad because after that World Cup, it like it felt like you know the world was his oyster. He could have, you know, he was on the up. He was going to do something really, really special, you know what I mean? But you know, the the bubbles burst with him right now, and it's uh, it's really disappointing. And you know, you know what? This this all goes to prove that. Uh, just anything with a little bit of talent should not just be popping on the first flight to Europe. We need to stay in Liga MX, develop good careers in Liga MX. You know. And he just, did develop a great career in Liga MX. He was a winner. He was there for yeah. a while. He was in the national you, team. He was you know, ready to you go. Know, you know he'd be the absolute starting goalkeeper. Not no goalkeeper questions or discussions would be have if Ochoa would stay in Liga MX and become an America legend. But, but John, we we know that you uh, we know that you prefer uh, America to do well as opposed to the Mexican national yeah, team. We know that. We know well, that. No, I mean, to go. I actually agree with Johnny with that because, but it's obviously easy to say with hindsight because he's made bad decisions. Oh, yeah. He's gone to a team in France, unfortunately, right. because. He had the Clembutamo scandal. So he's gone to a tiny team in France. I mean, we're talking a kind of Corre Caminos or something, you know, the equivalent of that kind of, kind of team. And then and then he's gone to Malaga and, you know, he's sat on the bench. So he, obviously he would have stayed back. But, that, but, you know, you want your players to kind of try new things. But obviously when it doesn't work out, it, 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 you know. I, I said the same thing about Raul Jimenez and Diego Reyes before they left. I say they sh they should stay at America. They should develop and establish their careers at America. They did. They oh, Ochoa did establish his career. He won a championship. Well, he he was there. Yeah. And, and, and so if he even stayed, if, if he stayed and went two more, he's on hey, Johnny, when could he go? Where? When 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 would his his career be established after you know? Because it's not like just because Ochoa, you guys would have won. You know, it's, it, it wasn't Ochoa who, who, who took you away from the championship. So if Ochoa would have been there for, what, no, two, three years, then he was ready to make I'm it? I'm talking about Ochoa's playing career. Right now, he'd be undeniably the number one at El Tri had he stayed in Mexico. True, but he's got to take that chance to go to... He, he went to a judge. He tried to challenge himself. But, I think that was the key there. You know, I think for a Mexican I, goalkeeper I we, to go to, to Europe... Europe way too much. No, no, but I think as 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 uh, I think if if uh, Ocho actually opened the door to other goalkeepers, Ocho opened the door to Raúl Gudiño. That's why FC Porto got him on a on a loan and got him pretty cheap, I think, from Chivas. So I think uh, in that regard, I think Ocho, even though it's going really bad right now, I think what he did in League One with Ajaxio, with a really really 
a small club like Tom says, a Correcaminos, a Lebriget, a really, really small club in a small island. He opened the doors for Mexican goalkeepers to have a shot in, in Europe, and I think that's that's a, that's something to. And wait, wait, I don't see Talavera. I don't see Talavera following in his footsteps. We we don't know. He might. Well, He's still good. That's entirely. Talavera, good. Talavera, Talavera's just a little bit smarter. He's staying his, you know, behind in Liga MX. But he could succeed in Europe. We know that. I, I think oh, he's an, he's a fantastic goalkeeper. I think he could do very well in Europe. He could do very well in Europe for multiple teams. Well, what I'm what I'm saying about Ochoa right now is what Talavera is currently doing. Just being the top Liga MX goalkeeper and kind of establishing himself into conversations. When, it's when just a bit. It's when, just when Danny, his skill is below it's, Ochoa's. It's, it's, you can't have it both ways. If Guardado would have stayed, if if Moreno would have stayed, then you know if it, you can't just go pick and choose. If if, if Memo would have stayed, who knows if he would have stayed for a jock show and then would have stayed one more year, got his EU passport and go to other teams, just like Tom says, there were offer there were could have been offers. It would have been a different story. That was the problem. But we'll see. Enough of the Ochoa talk. I'm mad because he's still there, and we can never <laughs> think about it. We're all angry. We're all uh, going into and closing out the Europeos uh, this weekend. Uh, Europeos obviously once again have a lot of lot of activity. Cesar, uh, I'll go to you on uh, games if you're prepared. I know we we were kind of kind of brought nope, you this, I'm but uh, not prepared. No. I'll look really Chicharito, quickly. Chicharito, right? Uh, Bayern Munich. I think uh, I think he's playing this Saturday if, if I'm not mistaken. So you know, I'm looking should... to more. I should be better prepared about this, but uh, I did not look it up. So, Welcome back. Welcome back. <laughs> give give me give me a minute, and I'll, I'll look up the schedule this week. All right, all right, all right. right. Uh, as far as um, as Fabian de la Mora, from for those of you that have been watching, first uh, coming in into a sub, and what I was reading is that his coach, uh, you know, the guy that he was that, that he subbed in for was really really upset the fact that Fabian de la Mora came in so late on uh, two weeks ago, and now got to start. So good things coming in, and from watching the match, very very involved at. Uh, a uh, couple of assists there. There, you know, we'll see where he comes from, uh, especially in, in the next couple of days um, where with Fabian de la Mora. But overall, a lot of people are calling El Por El El. Uh, what was the name of it? El Por Three and Porto. El Por Three was it? Right? There we go. El Por Three. So uh, we'll see how, uh, especially Hector Herrera, with the captain's armband, everything that's happened with the Europeo. So you know, I'm sure we'll get we, more news. We, we don't we don't have the exact games. I mean, I, I just checked that it is Bayer Leverkusen against Bayer Munich. Yes. But overall, February is a busy month for the Europeos because Bayer Leverkusen is involved in Europa League, as is uh, FC Porto involved in Europa League. Benfica is in Champions still, right? And PSV, PSV playing against Atletico Madrid. That is yeah. in a download. Atletico Madrid is not as intense as it, is, as it has been in the past right now. They're, they're struggling right now, especially in the goal-scoring department. Yeah, I just need to hope that uh, Guardado is, is fit because, obviously, you know, the rumors are two, three weeks out with that with that, uh, with that that injury, but, you two, know, three waiting weeks. for confirmation. Yeah, and if it would have been something uh, really, really serious, I think we would have been known about it, especially there was some tests done yesterday, uh, today. Nothing really coming out, so looking like two weeks is what we're seeing, maybe. Yeah, I mean, there's, there was supposed to be a confirmation today, but uh, it looks like nothing has come out just yet. There've just been rumors that it might be, yeah, like like Tom said, two, three weeks, maybe maybe a few weeks, but there has been no confirmation just yet about how long he'll be out for. Something I did say about Moreno and Guardado, Juan Carlos Osorio, uh, it's them two and everyone else. Um, from what he's saying in for the national national team, we had some questions uh, before we get to our Liga MX from. Uh, the Twitter page on what we wanted to talk about is Geo's upcoming MLS season. Um, and it, it's like, I, I'm trying to think of uh, what can we really offer? Go Geo. I mean, really get us Yeah, no, I, I think, I, you know, what I think it's really important um, is what positioning plays. Because I think what positioning plays at the, for his club, LA Galaxy, will determine to quite a large degree how much involvement he's going to get with Mexico. We've seen Juan Carlos Osorio come out and say he doesn't really want his, his, you know, his, his players that are in the prime to be playing in MLS. I mean, that was a big statement, though, what he said the other day. And for Giovanni's there. I mean, Giovanni can't you know, suddenly up roots and, and go. So it's going, to be, it's going to be interesting. Is he going to play on the wing? Can he play if it's a 4-3-3? Can he play in one of those wide spots? You know, or is he going to compete for one of those attacking midfield or, or the number nine spot? I mean, you know, 
I think it's it's going to be interesting to see where Bruce Arena uh, plays him. But what we know is that Juan Carlos already talking to him, and what you mentioned is that he's not going to have activity anytime soon with El Tri, right? I mean, yeah, the, the season the season doesn't doesn't start until March. I mean, they just played their first preseason. The Galaxy just played their first season friendly. I want so to say what? two or three days all, ago. All the MLS players from the United States, they can't, you know, they're not going to be fit. Also, it's it's like we go through this all the time. Is no, you I, not, I mean, let me, not let me, get, like, let me training? Let, let me put it real simple here. If Giovanni Dos Santos doesn't have a Jovinko type of season in MLS, then he's not a national team quality player for L3. Yeah. I think there's better players in L3 right now that can take over Giovanni's spot easily. So that's oh. what I say again. If Giovanni doesn't have a Jovinko style MLS season, he's not a national team player for L3. And now, for those of us that don't watch the MLS very often, no. what is that? It's a MLS. Don't call it the MLS. MLS. People sorry, get really you know they call it the MLS. Call it the MLS people get really annoyed. Uh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> like, like, the... So translate for for what Naib to say. If he doesn't have a Gignac kind of season. <laughs> 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 All right, now now you're speaking my language. I'm sorry. Um, so he could pretty much be the best player in the uh, best player in MLS. Yeah. Uh, Among the top three, let's put it, let's put it there. Let's let's not be too drastic. I'd say top three. But he has to be up there. It's got. It's just the NBA, the NFL, the MLB. Yeah, right. MLS. I think the reason is because like, you can't say it's the major league soccer when like obviously it isn't the major league soccer in the world. So I, I think that's but part of the argument. Major yeah, those, baseball. Those yeah, well, they, they have some of the best. They have the best teams in the world. Yeah, those uh. uh those the the MLS fans get so uptight when. So you say wait. So you don't. So you're saying that. When MLS teams win, it's not the national, it's not the world championship. That's oh, checked off. I, I think, checked I think off. a lot of us would, uh, would agree on that. Checked off. All right, guys. <laughs> if, well, if, let's... If, if the earthquakes win, you know, in, you know, just uh, the championship, I don't, I don't think they're gonna say that. You know, the earthquakes are better than Real Madrid. Got it. Got it. Well, just checking. Maybe. Maybe because there's, <laughs> I hear there's a really good guy coming up in the ranks that are playing. Anyways, we'll go. We'll, this, our U.S. corner will be sometime else, but let's go ahead and get and switch it over to Liga MX, where there's goals everywhere, and uh, we'll have exciting, exciting. I'm there tweeting for Food Mech Source uh, uh, Twitter, and it feel it felt like I'm Friday at least on Saturday. I couldn't stop putting goal on the Twitter. It felt like I'm going back between goals and what's happening. So let's go ahead and get started, uh, and we'll go right into Chivas. Chivas, the team that everybody <laughs> wants to succeed. Uh, but loves it when they fail miserably. Uh, a yet of how many games? One in ten for Almeida, which was the coach that changed the Copa MX, you know, winner. You know, the momentum was coming in for this great season they were going to have. They have the players. They took my uh, uh, Agulis Peña away, and now, you know, Carlos Fierro have gone. They have the players. Tom, Guadalajara, what's in the news? Chivas, Chivas, Chivas. Then we'll go into a little bit of Atlas también. I don't know where to start. <laughs> I think the best place to start is the, you know, Almeida saying at the end of the game against Morelia, which they lost 2-0, and he said it the week before in the game was that against Tigres. He said, you know, we're playing well. You know, these victories are going to come. We just have to keep going, keep our heads up, not not kind of, um, you know, not not uh, desesperar, desesperar, <laughs> you know, not not. Um, not get down and just keep going, but it's like you've won one in ten, and at the end of the, it comes to a point where it's like, okay, you've not been unlucky in nine of those games. You know what I mean? There's something wrong there. It's like that's that's a big enough sample to say you've not just had a bad afternoon. You actually there's something badly wrong. And I mean, you analyze the team and you think, yeah, there's a couple of injuries now, but you think centre back, the players just simply aren't on form. And you look yeah. at Pereira, Al Alanis is out. Salcedo's having a really bad season. I mean, there's no two ways about it. You know, he was supposed to be going to possibly going to Europe this winter and maybe next summer, but you know, he's not playing like a player who who is on the verge of a move to Europe. Quite frankly, he's on the verge of moving to Cruz Azul. He's on the verge of moving to Cruz Azul. Doing a Fabian, but then and then up front where you've got Omar Bravo, who's 35 years old, and you know uh, you've got uh, Zaldivar, uh, yeah. Uh, Zaldiva behind him and then you've got Michel Vasquez and it's like if Bravo isn't firing and let's not forget he had a, such an amazing 2015 it was always, always going to be hard for him to live up to that that year 
um, this time round. So you start picking holes in Chivas, and you think, you know what, Almeida's system, which is like ultra attacking, for me, it's out of balance. I mean, you know, I don't, I don't think the balance is there within the team in terms of. I think it's top heavy in the, on the attacking third. Um, you know, Gullit Pena didn't play well the other day. And it's like all of a sudden it gets to this stage with Chivas where these little things that should be little things that a, a lot of teams have, yeah. um, you know, weaknesses, but a couple of bad results and it's like a snowball. It's like a, I've talked about it before. It's like a dark cloud above Chivas, and and the clouds gather, and then there's suddenly a big storm. And at the minute. You know, the, the, they're only being held up by Dorados, so it's it's worrying. It's worrying for Chivas. We've been here before with Chivas. Been we we before, see yeah. it, oh, it, it, it. And what happens? They're going to lose maybe a couple more, and either Almeida is gone, but we still haven't found that the recipe for success, if it was last year, with at least getting some kind of winning, some kind of tournament, and giving something for, for Chivas. Uh, it goes back to the regatta talk. Is it the coaching talk? They have the players finally. I feel that they have a good enough squad looking at the players, but I guess they're not, now the players aren't producing where they're at. Yeah. You're saying it's top heavy, but what needs to change, Tom? Because I don't think it should be a coaching change, in my personal opinion. No. No, write it out. If they're gonna if they're gonna go to relegation, go to relegation with that coach and then fire them afterwards. But yeah. I'm feeling that pressure that two, three games lost, Bergata is gonna say he's out, and I don't yeah. think that's the right thing. No, it's not I, right. First, first thing, I don't think Chepo should have gone. Yeah, you know, they were in a bit of bad form back last. What was it? October, September time. But mm -hmm. who knows the league better than Chepo? Who knows Mexican players better than Chepo? Who knows Chivas better than Chepo? You know, all right, his style might be the most, might not be the most attractive, but I guarantee you, in that game against on Saturday, for example, I think Chivas would have got a result against a Morelia team who aren't that good. Let's be honest, but they're just so open and they're so vulnerable on the counter, Chivas. That I don't know. I mean, it's just I think they're, they're left over. I think teams go in to play Chivas now and they know they sit back and Chivas will give you a chance. Now, I, I don't know if this is a contradiction, but Vergara has to stay with Almeida. He has to. What's happened at Chivas is the players, they, they know they can blame it on the manager because the owner blames it on the manager. You know, and, and that's not in, not in kind of words, in deeds. You're firing a manager every like nine months. You're saying the manager's not right. And I think the players then are like, right, forget it then. We'll just not play, you know, and the manager will come. We'll get another one. Like, let's see how that goes. And at some point you have to go, right, Almeida's my guy. We're going to get it together. It might take another transfer window, but he's in and he's staying in, and we're going to get this together. And and then then the then the manager's got some kind of authority within the club and within the team, within the squad. And I don't think that's happened at Chivas for a long time. Very very true. I mean, it, I just keep going back that I felt that they had the signing for the uh, out of the preseason. I mean, they had Gullit finally coming in. Uh, the trades that they've done, it looks like the teams are there, and I definitely, but definitely agree. In, in your, in your uh, analysis of they have a great squad, who's scoring the goals in this little True. scenario? Or believe me, other stuff. I mean, if we're going to talk well, about one, the only one, the only players, if we're going to talk about someone who's from Chivas, I'm not, I'm not going to try to defend Chivas too much. They've, they've, been they've, they've been terrible, but I think if there is one little bright light. From Chivas, I think it's been Orbelin Pineda. I think Orbelin Pineda has been fantastic. He's kind of hit the ground running since uh, since uh, you know since he's moved to the you team. Know, one, of, one of the interesting things that I that I read from um, I think it was Ivan Afroxander who who said it to me. He said something along the lines that maybe Orbelin should play where Gullit is playing and Gullit should play where Orbelin is playing. And okay. I think that's something that Almeida has on both. And let's remember, Omar Bravo has one league one league goal in the last ten games. If you have yeah. that trouble, yeah. then and Chivas this, really doesn't have any solution. And this is a league with horrible defending where 50-something goals can be scored in one weekend. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a struggle for Chivas, it really is. And yeah. it's, uh, yeah, I mean, I think, you know, Oberlin, I agree with Cesar and I agree with uh, Naib there as well. But at the end of the day, why are you relying on a 19-year-old kid? Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, America signed the best League of MX players from the past season. You know what I mean? They do almost like a Bayern Munich, and you just pay. Oh, that player's really good for Carretero. Okay, William da Silva, let's buy him. Oh, Arriba Peralta's been really good for Santos, let's buy him. You know, Darwin Quintero, let's buy him. Benedetto at, at Tijuana, let's get him. They've got players, you know, and it's like Chivas have gone for a 19-year-old, and then Gullit Pena. I mean, it's easy with hindsight, and I know it's easy to say this, and I know Ovalin and, and, and Gullit Pena are, are top players, but Pena, you know, the World Cup. I mean, the rumor was everyone was talking that he was more interested in kind of sorting out the tickets for his family than actually like playing, and that's why he didn't even play any games. 
you know, yeah. I don't think he, I don't think he even came on. Am I yeah, mistaken? I mean, no, 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 no. I mean, the the rumors, work, I mean, the rumors is that Gulli is American. Nista. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's been it's pretty obvious. I mean, for a while now that just uh, Gulli isn't the same Gulli that we saw in early 2014. That's because I mean, he doesn't have Chapito Montes. I told you guys. <laughs> he, had a, he had a little bit of a resurgence last season, but he, he's, he, he's been absent, man. He's been completely absent. Boom back. I told you. Other than the first game, he, he had a, he's had one goal, but like yeah. Well, what, what I th what I take from Tom's analysis is if America signs the best players, that means America's the best team. <laughs> wow, that's a big stretch. If, if that's what you want to hear, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> if talking, one plus one equals two, you know. Let's go ahead and let's go ahead and talk. Sure. Let's go ahead and talk about America, the team that went to yes, play nice. the Copa MX game last weekend and finally won. And hey, apparently like, everything like, everything is like okay said, because like I uh, said in the in the intro, that never was never seen by the fans. America does not play Copa MX. They play international competitions. America's above Copa MX. Thank you very much. Yeah, because they're in, they 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 took out last weekend and and they scored goals, goals galore. There was an auto goal, you know. And Nacho Briz is okay. Everything's back. Thank you, Americanistas, for not going off in this weekend. You guys are safe. No problems whatsoever for beating the worst team I have seen in a very long time. With That's over a hundred so, and did, so what many did games. What you expect them to do then? And, and, and we're getting, hey, no, great, no, keep up, keep it up. Uh, I love the enthusiasm <laughs> in, what, in what we're doing. But America finally getting the win um, with, with them. We'll go to our Mr. Uh, Johnny Rico to have his moment with uh, finally uh, Nacho Ambriz to stay, correct? Nacho Ambriz to stay. Um, I, I don't know about that. <laughs> you know. I, I, I just like to see the team winning. I like to see uh, performances like Pablo Cesar Aguilar. This guy is a central defender and has a goal and an assist in a 3-0 win. So he was he was in my top ten players of the week. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, I think he needed to be in the, the you know top one players of the week. <laughs> you're you're saying he's better than Gignac. Gignac, you know. Better than Brian Brian Raveo from from It's easy for it's easy for Gignac to score. He's already all the way up up top on the field. <laughs> Pablo Cesar Aguilar has to defend, has to run up the field, has to score the goal, has to put in the assist. Run back and defend some more. Definitely better week than Gignac. <laughs> <laughs> I, love it. I love the conversation with Johnny's on on there. But uh, we're looking at America. What to look forward to America? Who do they play this coming Santos. up next? Santos. 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 Good game, though. Good. Yeah. It's gonna be a good game. Gonna get us uh, some uh, revenge on all the bad luck Kim Tate has brought upon America. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Oriol Peralta scoring um, will be a little bit of a, of a tear because supposedly, you know. The heart is 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 no, you know what? There's, the there's, some good, Lagunera. There's, there's some good news there. Okay, uh, I, w I was complaining heavily complaining about this on Twitter. Why does somebody sub out Dario Benedetto in the middle of a match and leave on Oribe Peralta on the field? And you know, I got I saw a tweet out there that said Oribe is such a ghost that not even Ambris noticed he was on the field to be subbed out. <laughs> <laughs> so, but the good I news mean, is the good news is. Peralta got injured when he scored, so hopefully he won't be available for the Santos match. It'll be, it'll be all Dario Benedetto. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, there you what, go. What, what has Peralta done? You know, I, I like the guy who can, who's a goal-scoring threat, which is Benedetto. Yeah. Well, I'm not he's got two in four games. I know. Did he score? I mean, I wish Omar Bravo had the numbers Peralta had, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, well, it's, there, there's levels. There, this is saying in Spanish. I mean, come on. No more I knew it. Switching it over to the to the news of the story this weekend was uh, a Leon coming in, uh, you know, leader that they are with against a Tigres, finally with Ginac not having stomach problems. Uh, he had Montezuma's <laughs> revenge or... Um, Dr. Yeah, Dr. Sick. And now back... Gignac in style scoring, like we all want him to score. Like the whole world is watching what he's doing. So many people are saying that this league is too easy for him. I've seen that in Twitter. I've seen that everywhere. Um, but just making it look and having a lot of fun against El León, who, uh, to given my team's credit, are one away from the worst defense uh, allowed in goals in, in this season than four weeks. But also one goal 
and they're the best offense. So that's Leon for you in all the seasons. Uh, <laughs> but what we got to do is, is Tigres coming back in, in, in a game where it was all Tigres, uh, a little bit of miscommunication in a corner kick, and Leon was able to, to get one in there, which is a 1-1. But once again, Jay Nack tells us, which I think it's the player of the week, uh, uh, regardless of what Johnny thinks. Um, but... Uh, Tom Ginek once more shows us how just the incredible pace, the incredible uh, game that he has, and, and what he's able to do with, with just the one touch of the ball, and it's in the net, top of the net. But uh, is that uh, is Tuka's team back finally with Ginek being 100% um, and seeing other players? Is is the team that we saw over last last season, or uh, what else do they need to get that status? No, yeah, I, I just think the, these first, first few weeks they were just kind of in preseason, and I think they probably only just get it together. I think you could say the same about Pumas as well, by the way. You uh, mm -hmm. after seeing them on Saturday, I just think they're just you know five ten percent off the off the top level still. But yeah, I mean Gignac first off hat trick. I don't know. I think the only thing to point out is like you look at the this isn't having a go at the Mexican strikers in the league, but there, there's your there's your kind of that's where you want to be where where Gignac is there. You know the the way the way he's taking his chances, the 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 amount he works because it's he's he's coming up from Europe and everybody you know is he just coming for the money this and that and you just watch him work forget the goals, you look how hard he works and you think that's a real player and I mean that's why he's in the French squad. True, true. Um, Naib. <clears throat> I wonder if Naib is back. I know he had some technical difficulties. Looks like he might be coming in in and out. But we'll go over to Mr. Cesar. Yeah. Leo didn't have a chance apparently on Twitter. Uh, go back to that. But uh... <laughs> well, I, I just want to do really quickly to those uh, Gignac goals and like he was he was my player of the weekend. I think he he definitely deserved uh, that credit. But I think also really quickly just look, uh, look at those last two couple of assists. Uh, Rafael Sobis. I think uh, he provided some excellent assist, especially in the second one uh, for Gignac, and I think he deserves a huge amount of credit uh, for the creation of those goals. But I, I think if we're also looking at uh, impressive performances for the weekend, we have to talk about Pachuca also uh, beating Monterrey 3-1. to one. I think that was potentially a preview uh, to uh, you know, a, 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 what we could see in the Ligia at the end of this season. Um, and it's fun to see. I mean, Pachuca, there's such a... They're such a fun team to watch, and it's exciting to see them actually getting results now. Because you know, for, for a couple of seasons, I thought they were kind of iffy, didn't know where they were going. But now this is the best start they've had, I believe, since uh, I looked this up since the 2009 Clausura. And yeah. at that the same start that they had, you know, where they had 10 points in the first four games, they ended up being finalists in that same yeah. season. Not saying that that's well, going to happen this season, yeah. but well, I, I think I think I really I really like the way they play as well. I think Diego Alonso. I think he's only 36, but you know, he's a really good coach. He's a really good coach. I like how the, how his team plays. But I think Pachuca, the difference this team, they've got a defense. <laughs> they've got centre backs. You know, in terms of uh, you know um, Omar Gonzalez from from LA Galaxy and uh, Murillo, the Colombian. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think they, yeah. they've got a solid base for the team now. So I think you know everything else follows on naturally from that. The youngsters. Yeah, yeah. the youngsters. Yeah, I mean they're they're obviously good. We uh, yeah we know that I think I think next weekend just to shift the conversation a little bit I'm I'm absolutely fascinated to see what Santos can do against America because America haven't been the best at home over the last few months if I'm not mistaken so and and Santos now with uh, Zubalia they just seem to be really solid I mean they really yeah. seem to have got it together quickly um, you know they've won the last three games they've only conceded once. In, over those last three, so I'm fascinated to see, you know, how they translate, you know, wins against Chiapas, Tijuana, and Querétaro, who, with full respect, aren't the top three of the top teams in the, in the league right now, and how they go to the Azteca and how they take on America and and, and to see what they could do there on uh, Saturday. Looking at the games for 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 next week, I, I feel like there there's not a bad game. I can't it's think kind of, of one game that I'm gonna that I'm gonna miss out. It is kind of weird having a Santos America game without Caixinha picking a fight with somebody. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll yeah. I, mean, I, mean, I mean, you also look at a. It'll, it'll, it'll be interesting to see uh, Chivas play a home game on a Saturday night as well. Yeah, because of the because uh, the old. Uh, it's good for me because <laughs> someday I'm usually working like a lot because you go to the Chivas game and then you have to write stuff and like do stuff after that. So 
I'll uh, watch the last game, Pumas Pachuca, which which is another game that I think is going to be a, a really good one to watch. And then you know, hopefully by three o'clock I'll be uh, I'll be done, and uh, you know, might tune into some some American football. I hear there's a I hear there's a bit of a game on. Yeah, there's some kind of game. But if we're looking at the schedule, like that's what we're looking at. I feel I feel like every game, maybe the Querétaro Veracruz is one that if you had to skip out. But Querétaro Veracruz, uh, Tijuana Cruz Azul. Uh, America Santos, we talked about on Saturday. Puebla uh, Atlas. I might, what Atlas might, I might, I might doing. pass on Puebla Atlas. Uh, just to see what <laughs> Atlas kept going with. Uh, Monta Monterrey Dorados. I get anything with, Mora with, with Dorados is, is, is a little bit not entertaining, but we'll see if Monterrey can pick up from the loss. Leon Morelia. Uh, Leon, not yet with, with Bocelli. It looks like it's going to be another Tena. couple of weeks, so hopefully we're there. Um, but with know, Tena so coming yeah. Yeah. Luis Fernando Tena in there. I mean, that that for me was slightly weird. And I think you know, somebody coming in to uh, to replace uh, PC who's obviously gone to the Chilean national team, which is massive. I mean, the fact that a national team like Chile, the Cop reigning Copa America champions, have come to a manager who really hasn't done that much with Leon. Nothing. Is that a fair weasel? No. <laughs> what, I, what has he done? He got I mean, four wins. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I don't think he's been bad, but I mean, the fact that like the the Chilean Chilean Federation is focused on him, yeah, yeah, I think it's fascinating. It. I think it's fascinating. But anyway, he's um, tenor. I mean, I think that's a weird one. But to be, to be fair, PC was the second the second option because Herrera did not want to leave Cholos. <laughs> Still, that looks good in the league. That looks good on Mexican soccer. The fact that there are two coaches right there, like up yeah. the consideration right there for the for the Chilean yeah. national team. But um, but yeah, I think the the tenor thing now is going to be it's going to be interesting because it's definitely a very different line of thinking from Leon, and I think tenor desperately needs some it. If you look at what he's done since the um, since the Olympic gold, I mean Cruz Azul, what lukewarm at best, yeah. you know. I think he re he really he needs something now. He he badly needs to something to work out. And I really thought it was I I, I thought it was just a rumor. Ah, they're not going to bring the tenor brothers back in. There's no way. And uh, Seeing the you know Martinez Junior saw him in there and now with Chava Reyes I think is is an auxiliar I uh, I I don't even know where to go and, and but the funny thing yeah. is it could surprise a tenor team could be good um in 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 how Leon has been playing and how Leon likes to be offensive and yeah. maybe this is what they need because they're so back and forth with a horrible defense great <laughs> offense and no, great uh, to watch. maybe maybe no, maybe great, yeah, <laughs> maybe that's they're the Liga MX team. I mean, that's how the that's how the league is. But let let's be honest. Um, I'm ex I don't know what's gonna happen with 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 Tena. So I, looking at I those, because you know what, Tena is the Cruz Azul of managers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, hasn't won a title since '97. So yeah. with Cruz Azul. <laughs> yeah. Not a, <laughs> Charlie. It's like you get us to think about things that we're not ready for, man. You, there's a little chat. There's was it ninety-seven? I don't know. Maybe I'm, I should I'm, Google I'm this. Registered. I'm like, is that true? <laughs> this is like the boy that cried wolf. You know, we don't believe you because sometimes you come out with the most outrageous things. But that's why we love having you on the show. Uh, going back to uh, to to the schedule, Guadalajara Toluca, another loss to. Lu <laughs> You know where they're coming in. What will set the the Guadalajara train keep it on going on the relegation tour? Uh, Chiapas Tigres, uh, obviously Ginac and Chiapas with what well, I thought was looking good with uh, with La Volpe until until the end uh, their match. And then at the end, obviously on Sunday, um, right before you know a couple of hours, I think uh, five hours before the Super Bowl, one game Pumas and Pachuca. Which uh, Pumas ever gonna wake up to uh, what's happening? But Interesting, interesting games. Um, lots, lots of happening. So, yeah, got a quick question. Um, well, we've got a comment from Jason Marquitz who said, "Shut it, Johnny." <laughs> <laughs> is that, In reference is that to uh, the Cruz Azul talk. <laughs> and, um, Eddie, Eddie Rocha, Rocha is saying, "Ruben Omar Romano is the Cruz Azul of managers." Yes, no, no, <laughs> yes, no, yes. no Ru Ruben Omar Romano is the Dorados of managers. <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got uh, Eddie Rochas also say El Golazo de la Onada. Oh, I mean, uh, there's a bunch Salinas. of good ones this weekend, weren't there? There are a bunch of really good ones. Uh, I'm, going, I'm going for Salinas with Atlas. I was like, I was at the game, I was watching, I was like, Atlas looked like they've gone, <laughs> don't have a goal in them again. And then all of a sudden it's like, bang, and you're like, wow, that was uh, amazing. Yeah, this actually was, was, for me, just immediately comes to mind. Maybe I'll, I'll think of another one, but all the layouts 
for Christmas um, Souls? Um, the, the one where he like headed it up and then he like immediately turned around yeah, and had I'm, a quick volley? That was impressive to me. I'm I'm picking uh, Pablo Cesar Aguilar to Osvaldito Martinez to volley it three with the outside of the foot. Yeah, that's the goal right. of the week. All right. I'm sure I'll think of some, I'm sure I'll uh, think of a different one at some point. But... Oh, the Morelia one. Oh, as Morelia well. game. Yeah, the oh, Morelia. Oh, yeah. Was, was it Juan Pablo Rodriguez? Yeah. That's, oh, that's yeah, not yeah. even a question. The Morelia was yeah, a goal of the week. Flat out. Yeah. Flat out. All right, cool. guys. Uh, All right. For those of you that don't know, we have a little bit of a competition between the Mexican show here, staff and writers, um, with a, uh, a a quinella that we have on there. So I'm sure. Uh, yeah. Thank you to Amy. Our intern who who put that together, but you will see how we all do. Who can take the reins uh, from Tom and Naive, who won last weekend? But I was gonna say right he, before we easy win. Just want to thank you know my family. I want to thank you know. Everybody. <laughs> hey, 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 Naive did just as good as you. But <laughs> well, he can thank his family if he wants. <laughs> but he went. It went Naive, and 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 Tom, and then Ty from Central And then all the time, and then That's Johnny sad. was left. Yes, yeah, Cesar and Jason and, and and I and then Johnny was last. So, Johnny, you got you got work to do for next weekend, buddy. It's a, it's alright. And you know what? I was I was I was all I don't want to be the Cruz I don't want to be the Cruz Azul. You know, starting off at the top of the league. <laughs> so you want to be the Dorados? You want to be the Dorados? What's gonna happen at the end of the year? Whoever's got the least amount will get relegated, and then. We'll, we'll we'll choose somebody to come in and uh, yeah. we won't be part of the Mexican soccer. I wanna I wanna I wanna apologize for my for my technical difficulties from my side. Uh, Naive sort of back. Heard, uh, <laughs> you, you, just, of, you just lost two hundred Twitter followers, Naive. You just lost two hundred Twitter yeah. followers. No 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 I know I know I did I know I did say that uh, I heard bits bits of the Liga MX talk. Um, you know I think it's really important the, the America Santos because I think uh, America doesn't get home wins. So I think this is going to be a big challenge for Ambriz. I think Santos has been one of the best teams so far in Liga MX alongside Pachuca. Coincidentally, the two best teams that work the youth systems, Pachuca and Santos, are, are the, the best teams so far in this season. It's a young season. But but they're looking they're looking sharp. I think at this point last season, actually, like, I think Morelia was like in like first or second place. So let's no, just, no. just 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 some perspective. All right, yeah. guys. Well, uh, we've gone over this. When we start late, it looks like we go a little bit over. But hey, we, that means we can spend more time with you guys. So uh, thank you so much for watching. All of you that are listening to us on iTunes, that uh, Naive does a great job putting it on the podcast. If this is Wednesday or Thursday, uh, exciting, exciting that you're listening to us on on your radio. It's kind of great. Um, we love all the all the attention that we're getting on the YouTube um, channel, especially those of you that subscribe. Thank you on yeah, Facebook. Thank you. Thank Twitter. you. Uh, definitely share it uh, with everyone. Uh, we're, I don't think that uh, there's a show quite like ours. Definitely not as crazy since we have Johnny and no one else has a piece of Johnny's <laughs> mind except for us. So, guys, thank you so much for watching. I want to thank everyone on the chats, all the Pancho Villas Army guys who join uh, from all over the United States. Definitely check them out. They, uh, just a quick plug for them. They have tickets uh, on sale for the Copa America which are going to come out all over the United States. So uh, it's a great way for you to get tickets with your family. Great atmosphere with yeah, them. Good, Remember that giant, yeah, giant atmosphere. TIFO. Great, great atmosphere. I recommend it. But other than that, thank you to Amy, uh, our, our awesome intern who started already and is doing amazing things with all of us. And also Mr. Ivan Afrozander on Twitter who uh, has been live tweeting. Uh, the Mexican Soccer Show. If you'd like to have uh, ask us any questions, we're there at Mex Soccer Show on Twitter, and all of us you'll see our heading headlines here on where you can find us. Thank you very much, and we'll see you all next week. Nos vemos en el próximo Monday night. Football. See y'all later. <laughs>